Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today, uh, Wednesday, January 9th, 2013. All right, so I'm gonna continue here with the drones that we were talking about. Um, just a few more articles, or talking about this, uh, these exercises that were going on between the Air Force and Special Operation for uh, a forest is forces in Virginia Beach and uh, how basically the sheeple didn't see them. Remember I told you right before I uh, did my recent move was I saw a drone. In fact, I heard it. Um, I heard it before I saw it and I knew that something did not sound right. Usually you can tell when you hear like a little Learjet or something weird uh, flying overhead. Um, you know, I was lived on a, a Marine Corps F-18 base for four years. So I was used to hearing different aircraft and especially them rumbling over over my room. Um, so, you know, I, I do pay attention to that stuff, you know, besides spraying of aerosols like today. They're just, you know, especially the mega regions, man, they, they just get hammered uh, with these aerosols. But those but those drones, every once in a while, you, you could actually see them. Like I said, it's only a matter of time until they start uh, uh, taking out, assassinating American citizens, dissenters, or whoever they deem terrorists or threats, national security threats, uh, in their backyards. So the question is, is uh, um, how will how will people react to that? Will they just be like, you know, uh, WTF, or you know, and uh, and try to do something and talk about it and, and try to raise awareness and and stuff like that, or will they just passively go about their uh, their lives being distracted, right? So it's here, uh, and of course, um, totally cozy with their technology, right? That's been handed to them to distract them. And of course, they help fund these drones. All the R and D goes to them. Whether you know, to buy all these weapons and stuff like that. Oh yeah, they're gonna grab your guns. Go out and support the military industrial complex and buy a bunch of weapons and stuff like that. And buy your iPhones and, and nothing wrong with the iPhone, I guess. I mean, if you can get information out, but I'm just saying that it's actually funding these drones that are going to help enslave you more. So it's a vicious cycle. We have nuclear security helicopters testing radiation levels above D.C. area. We know in Baltimore, the uh, Department of Homeland Security recently uh, installed these radiation detectors in subways and stuff like that. And we were just talking about how these unmanned military planes, uh, I would imagine drones, flying over uh, Virginia Beach so helicopters have been conducting radiation tests above portions of the Washington, D.C. area using remote gamma radiation sensing technology. They said they've been flying these missions since December 27, 2012, and they'll continue to Friday, uh, January 11th. Oh, and I love this too. Naturally occurring radiation is measured so that baseline levels can be established and used in security emergency preparedness. So, <laughs> see that actually people read that and then they just say oh okay and then they go back to their to their uh, whatever right um a reality shows or, or slash them or vampire shows or whatever and uh they forget it they don't even think about it. okay well the government said it's naturally occurring radiation kind of like naturally occurring fluoride well fluoride that's uh, sp uh, uh spit out as toxic waste from uh production of aluminum and and fertilizer that uh basically makes people infertile um so they can't have kids anymore that's that's actually not naturally occurring. That's 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 something that's a derivative. That's a chemical toxic waste, um, just like ELF Wi-Fi smog. Um, you know, that's uh, that's kind of like a waste product. It's like a smog. It is real. And then you have uh, just naturally occurring radiation. Well, there's radiation that's due to everything that's being done by man. So it's funny that they can do this. Uh, because they can just raise it, just like the EPA in the United States uh, did it after Canada, raised their minimum um, safety levels for radiation after the, the Fukushima incident. So that's what they do, just raise the minimum levels. Okay, yeah, that's now you're safe. <laughs> Should drones fly commercially? So, uh, my answer quickly is if we were living in a free society where we weren't coerced, um, they the threat of violence and stuff like that, maybe. You know, they could be actually used for humanitarian missions, like they always sell them, like uh, tracking people in RFID chips and stuff like that as, you know, uh, public safety and rescue, search and rescue. But we're not. Um, you know, we live in these metropolises and, and these slave grids, and as long as we do, we don't really have much choice in our self-determination. No, I don't think that drones should be flying commercially. So I'm just going to uh, move on, basically. Uh, we already covered the Alice in Wonderland ruling lets feds keep mom on targeted killing legal rationale. Then you have Japan and China step up uh, drone races. Tensions build over disputed islands. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Japan had to deploy jets, fighter jets, uh, to ward off some uh, Chinese, whether aircraft or boats, whatever they were. And so it's going back and forth right now, and they're really building it up and hyping it up. Both countries claim drones will be used for surveillance, but experts warn of future skirmishes in the region's airspace. Well, <laughs> they could just say both countries claim that they'll be used for search and rescue, but experts warn that they'll be used for surveillance. See how they can just tie that up? Uh, you know what I mean? So eventually you can say that, um, uh, pro, uh, you know, the U.S. government and Homeland Security uh, will say that these drones, they claim that drones will be used for uh, uh, search and rescue, but privacy advocates warn that, uh, um, warn of uh, future uh, attacks and assassinations in American airspace. And it's crazy because, like I said, I want to see how this actually plays out in, in the United States, you know, because I could see that that actually being like a news headline. We just call us privacy advocates. I don't want to get fucking bombed, you know what I mean? And I don't want to get, uh, uh, you know, accidentally blown up because somebody next door was a suspected terrorist, right? He'd probably post something on Facebook. Um, it says here, China's anti-satellite weapon, a trump card against the United States. So amid reports China's gearing up, conduct uh, one more anti-satellite test called ASAT, putting U.S. global or GPS at risk. Chinese state media uh, today asserted that Beijing had the right to carry out the test as it is a trump card against Washington. And we have suspected U.S. drone. Uh, one quick thing, too, is that uh, you got to remember that, uh, you know, Japan is pretty much... Uh, their country, the Rothschilds, got them by the balls. I hate to say it, or by the short hairs. So uh, they're not an independent, sovereign Japan. Um, then we have uh, this. A suspected U.S. drone floating or found floating in Philippines. The Philippine Navy officials said the suspected American drone has been floating in the off ocean off a central province, prompting them to deploy a ship with ordnance experts that their fishermen reported the object may have been a bomb. It's a 10-foot drone marked Navy. So finishing up with these articles, the X-37B and the five scariest super weapons the military is developing in 2013, saying 2012 is an action-packed year. And it doesn't look like the world is showing any signs of slowing down. Of course, they're talking about weapons to enslave you and go off planet and rape other sort of resources from other planets, like whatever, Mars, or and uh, try to, if there are people, to enslave them. So, And, of course, they're going to use cyborgs or super soldiers, very few of them, uh, with uh, mostly drones um, at their uh, command, right? Because they, want, they don't want to leave them completely autonomous, these drones. They've got to have someone that's semi-human, uh, but that's hooked up to the matrix so that they can be completely controlled, um, uh, you know, as far as not resisting or not rejecting orders, right? Setting up their own colony. So machine animals are uh, mecha animals. This uh, Boston Dynamics big dog, okay? Of course, this, again, this is National Laboratories using your taxpayer money via DARPA. And people make fun out of these things. I, I, I just, like I said, they uh, people downplay these things, but I said, just wait, you know? I just, uh, when you have a super soldier with drones and uh, half of them are like cheetah bots and they're chasing you down, um, you, I'd just like to see you still laughing, you know what I mean? Especially when they have lasers or they have all kinds of crazy shit hooked up to them. Uh, then you have, of course, of course, the, yeah, the cheetah bot, right? They're going like, they're going faster now than the, the fastest super Olympic uh, um, runner, sprinter. So like up to 30 something miles an hour, electromagnetic guns. So, um, then you have, let's see, what's next? Three hypersonic weapons and orbital bombardment. And this is what we were just talking about. Uh, directed energy weapons, i.e. lasers. Uh, Russia and the United States are at the head of this right now. That's why most of the uh, trucks and all that, they always look the same, Russian or American. They, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference with them if they weren't marked. But also plan this concept is the space-based laser. The program got its start originally as Reagan's famous Star Wars program, which was a flop due to the lack of technology to make it feasible? Not anymore. Well, who knows, right? You know, that's what we're told. There we go. Super soldiers, right? They had an exoskeleton to help them, right? They now have bullets that can be uh, controlled through a HUD display. Got this foam now, they can insert like this foam package and it uh, heals wounds. That was the most recent thing. Nano sensors implanted in soldiers that monitor their health remotely. And of course, they sell this and they get it funded uh, through the slaves. I mean, promising them uh, eternal life, you know, or eternal youth and not dying and stuff like that, basically to keep you alive. And they fund all that um, along with your tax dollars, like I said, uh, for this R&D, research and development of this technology, which will be used in warfare, again, to help enslave people or anybody. 
But they always say, oh, it's easier to find both in science fiction or in fiction in real life than in real life. So, but that's the thing. They've been, they've, they've already had the idea of this a long time ago. Who knows if the technology actually already existed, but hey, we're seeing it now for the first time, which means it probably already existed and existed within the past 50 to 100 years. A lightning laser weapon developed by U.S. Army. U.S. Army scientists are developing a weapon, which means it's already developed, which can fire a laser-guided lightning bolt at a target. So it's called the Laser-Induced Plasma Channel, or LIPC. It's designed to hit targets that conduct electricity uh, better than the air or ground that surrounds them. The scientists on the project said, we never got tired of the lightning bolt zapping our simulated targets. If a laser puts out a pulse with modest energy, but the time is incredibly tiny, the power can be huge, he said. During the duration of the laser pulse, it can be putting out more power than a large city needs, but the pulse only lasts for two trillionth of a second. 50 billion watts, he says this means the air could be manipulated to act like a lens. A German military laser destroys target over one kilometer away. So, German company that brought us one step closer to the kinds of shootouts only seen in sci-fi films again. Uh, they recently tested a 50 kilowatt high energy laser uh, at their proving ground facility in Switzerland. So, again, another globalist hub. So, said so the laser pass test with flying colors. Droid. Droid DNA augmentation initiated. Vision expanding to a 5-inch 1080p HD display and camera. Touch acquiring NFC. Hearing evolving repeats audio. Wireless charging activated. Introducing Droid DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone. It's an upgrade to yourself. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. It's Wednesday, January 9th, 2013, and I'm Jarko. My website is ggnonline.com. Um, if you'd like to check out all my videos, also on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. I should be able to get all the headlines and links in YouTube's video description, so check them out. Alright, um, this is a, a, a game that uh, someone had uh, shown me like the... Basically, the tutorial walkthrough about the four uh, conclusion or scenarios that could play out. Uh, pretty crazy, though. Uh, just a lot of programming in this. And he says, please enter your date of birth, which is crazy because it's complete programming. Um, is directed towards younger people um, and basically about altering human DNA. And right? once it's gone, it's gone. And so it's a big deal. And that's what they're doing. They're, they're programming people about this, uh, hooking up to the Matrix and stuff like that. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you just saw that commercial about, uh, you know, droid DNA and stuff like that. Uh, some people call it the mark of the beast and stuff like that, but, uh, that's, that's how they, they, they're just going to memorize, mesmerize people and people are going to be on board for it. So, uh, I guess what I could say is it's going to be a wild ride, right? U.S. spy agency predicts a very transhuman future by 2030. This, again, will just set the template for some of these articles that I've come across recently from December 12, 2012. I did cover this before, but I'll just go through it briefly. It talks about the National Intelligence Council releasing its 140-page report on major trends over the next 20 years. This is among their predictions, foresees the end of U.S. global dominance. Of course, this is by design. They've, they've just basically used us like a cash hog, and uh, our military and our men... And World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, uh, uh, for what? For their global domination. So the rising power of individuals against states is because people will realize they're going to be resisting against not individual sovereign states, but a global dictatorship. A growing middle class that will increasingly challenge governments. No, it'll be governments challenging the middle class who's being squeezed. Again, cash hogs. They like the middle class as long as they can control them and keep them distracted. Once they can no longer do that, you know, that's when, that's when they're coming. So, an ongoing shortages of woo, f food, water, and energy. But they also envision a future in which humans have been significantly modified by their technologies, which will herald a dawn of a transhuman era. So, they talk about prosthetics and powered exoskeletons, so that it could result in substantial improvements in human capacity. So, but unfortunately, this is going to be for the billionaires, right? Um, like the people that that billionaire designed uh, the you know the Russian about the 2050 or 2040 project of, of avatars and stuff like that. This is reserved for them. They're the ones that can afford it. Kind of like in time that movie. They're the ones that can afford all that stuff. Like time. 
they'll promise you, you know, eternal youth. Like many of these technology will be used by the elderly, both as a way to maintain more youthful levels of strength and energy. So life extension, well, well why can't they just live healthy? Like the guy was just talking about in Britain, 109 years old because of the eugenics. They'll need these things and they'll fund the billionaires. Thank you.